What's up, everyone? After a what felt like a blink of an eye, six weeks are done. We've got our 18 matches per team, and we've got our eight teams going to the LCS Championship. Digon here with Dom and LS. It's time for our final episode of Face Check for the regular season. Also, big shout outs to Joe, who's in the middle of like the bumfuck nowhere UK doing this all on his phone. So, uh, yeah, shout outs to Joe. Everyone, let's give some love to Joe in the chat, in the comments. Let's, uh, yeah, make sure to know we've moved hell and high water to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. How, how are you doing, uh, Dom? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. I'm in the middle of the grind. I've been doing LCK VOD reviews been doing you know t1 VOD reviews as always um as well as lec lpl lcs three talk shows we're in the middle of the grind like this is like the 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 end like after this week i, I start to free up where it's like starts being only like two leagues running at the same time as opposed to like all three in the in the midst of everything right yeah uh ls i different show but i i saw that you would tweet out something about how Al uh, how uh, T1 are doing right now. It's 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 not not some good times right now for the fakeless T1. Um yeah, I made that video yesterday. I'm I'm going to go over it like more extensively soon. Um because there were some Reddit threads uh or not Reddit, sorry. There were some Korean like community threads made about me. Um that video and like stuff that I ended up saying. So I'll probably just evaluate more of it um but obviously like on my end i mean dom, dom is fun dom dom's doing the grind in a way that i fucking can't right now um so it's a you know always an interesting adventure always an interesting adventure 100 percent. well uh let's get into the adventure that is the lcs um six weeks do we feel like this was an acceptable set up for how the season ended up that going is spring here. that's being shown by the way yeah thank you uh again guys you forgive joe he's again he just he barely could see anything you know i <laughs> it's very hard to see things when you're doing things on your phone but mm. we're up and gone. uh yes. six week format here a lot of games back to back do we feel like this summer split was uh was a success you can you can figure out what whatever subjective answer success is for yourself, but how how did you feel about it? Uh I don't know if I'll consider this uh, this a success. I mean, I think it's a success for some teams, um, but I don't think it was it was good for viewership. I mean, I don't think that the walkout did any favors for people that are trying to watch the league. I mean, there's so many matches. The matches start on Wednesday. Obviously, Wednesday matches are gonna have pretty bad viewership because people are working it's the middle of the week like it just it felt kind of rushed and then also like for the teams i mean i think we got some lower quality performances than you would have otherwise because instead of going from like four days a week of scrims you go down to three days a week of scrims with the off day and it seems like right. one's team starts snowballing negatively it's like completely fucked for the entire week whereas when you have a lot of these two game weeks you know if you have a bad week it's easier to recover and reset and use those four days to your advantage Yeah, that felt pretty uh, more of like a form kind of season rather than a preparation kind of season here, LS. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like I was talking with uh, Fudge today for a couple of hours and, you know, I was talking about like the schedule and everything like that. And I, th I think like Dom really kind of hit, hits the nail on the head in that this season feels really weird. It's very, very fast. And obviously with the reduction no, well, the scrims are also sort of lower quality because I think that players like from various LCS team or various LCS players that I've talked to across different teams, this was probably one of the most like burnout splits that yeah. has ever happened just because of the intensity of it, right? Six super weeks in a row. And then the way that the days work for them in the practice schedule and everything like that combined with everything else going on, it just feels like utter garbage, right? Um, the other problem that summer had was that it was played on such few patches which just also mm -hmm. made everything feel so repetitive and then also with solo queue dramatically changing some of the champions like players have to really depend on just playing on tr 
um, because things are just so different. Like, the live patches rapidly changed so quickly, patch to patch, for the way that champions were. And then on TR, you're, like, going back in time, and everything's just a mess. If we would have had a full season, do you feel like these patches would have created a a, a more healthy, I guess, uh, meta for the game? Because then you're like, you at least have a little bit more practice to be able to do that on solo queue rather than just being in this like time chamber of just playing old patches. But oh, I think, I think the problem, there's... The problem... yeah, yeah, go for go it. Go for it. it. No, I, I was going to say like, um, I think like, yeah, if, if there's more time inside of the season, we're going to get access to more things in terms of patches being able to be uh, flipped over. And then the way that Riot does the balancing with the patches and stuff, maybe things would have happened sooner. Uh, with the way that they operate with the balance changes. So in that regard, I think that we could have had a, overall a healthier split from like a viewing experience, even a play experience, right, for the players. The way that it turned out, I, I think, is just disastrous. And in, in a way, I also think people got caught up on things that were then found to just not be super great. And I think that that impacted negatively a lot of teams. Yeah, I was going to say something similar. I think also the patches were, like Ellis says, they're dramatically different. So you go from like a 13-11 Yumi and Milio or Giga OP with Zeri, right? Like Zeri right. is just Zeri. one of the best champions um, in the entire game as it's been pretty much since uh, release of the champion in different um, iterations. And then 13-12, Zeri's out of the game. Kai'Sa rises up. Milio is nerfed. Uh, is, is it still good? Everyone's trying to figure out if it's still good. Static Shiv is actually buffed on 1312. So now everyone wants to play Static Shiv. So everyone's scrambling to find out what are the good Static Shiv champions? What are champions that are like passable with Static Shiv? Is Ash actually a Static Shiv champion? Is Vayne a Static Shiv champion? Do we go like AP Varus in the bot lane? Okay, if we have an AP Varus plus an AP mid, what top lane 80 carry, like 80 champions can we play to balance our team comp? There's so much going on. And then things just change again in 1313 where Static Shiv gets nerfed. And then people are like, okay, now do we, is it good? Is it not good? Do, can we do it with Dematerializer? And the thing that was different is that LCS was significantly ahead in terms of patch cycle then right. LPL and LCK. So normally when this happens, LCS teams are looking to LPL and LCK and seeing yep. what they're playing. Um, I think actually one of the biggest issues with the way that players view LPL and LCK is a lot of times, in my experience, players are looking at LPL and LCK mainly to figure out what champions they're playing and what builds they're playing, which I don't even think is the best part of those regions. But that is something that, that normally is a, a, one part of an advantage of LCS is because you're slightly delayed on the patch cycle, you're able to look at those um, games that happen earlier in the week because LPL starts on Monday, for example. So their patch changes if they're on time, which pretty much outside of Lunar New Year, they are. Those patches happen earlier. You'll be able to get like three days of, oh, okay, this these ideas in your head of what could be good. And then you try it yourself in scrims during those days. And then you bring it into LCS Thursday, Friday. So I think that, that it was just people scrambling to try to figure out what was going on um and yeah i mean there's just not much time to adapt to the different patches when you're running in a six super week cycle so when we get to that point it creates a i guess more a less consistent product in terms of teams that are dominant which led to some entertaining games and some very long drawn out games that were back and forth but also do you feel like it led to a worst product for many people for 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 i guess the overall health of the league this felt like a a season where everyone kind of acknowledged we're not playing very well right i think part of it's that i think the other thing is that there was just like this weird vibe coming in with this walkout where people kind of were turned off by it they're like oh man we're standing with the players there was suddenly this like whole like you know, rising up in, in the first couple of weeks of, yeah, we're standing with the players. We love that they're like, you know, standing up for something that they really believe in. They're, you know, standing up for their comrades and their, their, um, yeah, their, their academy players, all this stuff. And then once that kind of fell through, people were like, what the fuck did we even do this walkout for? Like nothing even ended up happening. And then the schedule was so condensed when LCS started, people didn't even know that LCS was starting. Like the first day was one of the worst days of viewership ever. Right. And the reason for that is, and that's normally, if, if you know anything about LCS, that, that's normally the biggest day of viewership of LCS. They'll start with like a banger match. LCS hasn't been on in a while. That's when people are going to come back and watch. 
that was one of the lowest watch days of the entire split because people didn't even know it started so it was just it was very weird where people didn't know it started and then once people realized oh lcs is going on it felt like the split is just over already so in terms of like a product standpoint i i felt at least from like my chat that people were less invested in this split of lcs than in previous splits sure sure it's also uh, just too much lcs like let's be honest when when you have LPL every single day and it's playoffs and you're getting like EEG versus top esports, that's people are going to be watching that. But like LCS, you don't want to watch like four three days of Immortals in a row. It's tough. Like it's tough to watch three <laughs> days of Immortals in a row. You got to have yeah, one a of certain the, type of like makeup to be well, able to handle that. One of the things that happened that was really interesting in Spring Split, at least for me, I don't know how you felt, is uh, Spring LEC was enjoyable to watch almost regardless of who was playing. Just because the stakes are high with the format. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, obviously, like, I think the players have... Again, well, yeah. Huh? What? 18 playoff. Like, this this split, like, just to add to your point, the 18 playoff obviously makes it... I mean, in, I guess in this circumstance where FlyQuest was battling to get a playoff spot the whole time, it made it feel a little bit more, like, high stakes. But yeah, I mean, in general, you're right. Like, the stakes are just... It doesn't feel like the, the stakes sta are very high. Right, right, right. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's interesting. Now, obviously, there's the there's the murmurs that LCS will will switch to this format right next year, or mm -hmm. that all the leagues might uh, switch to it. I, I think is like one of the hypotheses right now, right? Um, yep. yep. That'll be interesting because I think that's going to make every region more digestible. At, at least my belief. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about like LPL. Um, yeah, I think I think it's going to make every region a lot better. I think that LPL and LCK will still keep their best of threes, but I think that if the format exists in the way that it does in LEC, I think it's going to make everything better. Yeah, it, it creates these stakes. I think we kind of wonder what happens to all of our record books here. Um, you know, for me, I, I like being able to compare through stats, at least. Obviously, each era is different and the meta is different, but that, that'll be a change. But... It, it it does feel like it, it it is a shame that this year was so rushed and everyone just kind of acknowledged that it you know the the quality was lower because of all these circumstances that both of you guys just laid out with this year. Uh, so one one thing I was talking to with one of the um, with with one of the casters, one of the members of the broadcast team, was how it feels like the fact that now we are. To, for our global coverage you've got to watch every single day yep. rather than like hey i want to watch saturday sunday i can give those two days to watch the west and now right. i feel comfortable with the west and then i can go back and watch lpl and lck as i want to see rather than wow i have to spend five days now to watch all of the west it, it, right. it i mean it's a full-time it job different. It's a full-time yeah. job to watch League, I can tell you, because I'm doing it right now. Like, No, it's more like, than full-time. Yeah, it's more it's than a full-time job to watch League jobs. these days. It's two full-time jobs. It's two full-time yeah. jobs. And yeah. that's not including stuff that we do off-stream. Correct. So, I mean, it's... Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. No, obviously, think... you and I are the only ones that do this, though, right? To this to this degree. Motto. Like, Yamato does it. Oh, as Yamato well. does Yamato does the same exact uh Yeah, okay. he, he does even he does LCK, he does everything. Okay, cuz uh the uh, like a few days ago I did an AMA thing on like Instagram and someone asked me about like the schedule stuff and then on stream I talked about it. It's like the only uh co-streamer who has the most ideal schedule is Kadrol because he operates in one time zone, which is just yeah. ideal. That that's <laughs> just like you don't have any sleep like disorder. Like you have sleep apnea. I have fucking shift work, sleep disorder. I, I'm on medication every day just to be able to stay awake. Like, <laughs> like I don't fuck it. It's hard to do three time zones, and Riot changed all the time zones, so it's that much more difficult. Like before, you could start LCK at 5 p.m. and then LEC starts an hour and a half after LCK ends, and then mm -hmm. LCS starts before LCS ends. So you could actually just do one block, 14-hour stream or something like that, right? Yep. You can't do that anymore. Riot changed all the time zones. So it's yeah. not possible. Like, it's... So... It's just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hell, man, to do all, to do all three. I, I nope. am excited to be, hopefully, you know, hear the learnings and results from the 
global broadcast team about this whole thing. Remember way back at, at the beginning of the year when they're like, okay, we're switching to 12 JK. We're switching to two. You know, what did we learn from this? What are the learning lessons from this? Because it, it is less about the amount of, uh, you're, you're spending the same amount of hours watching all the leagues, but now you're spending multiple days across those hours. It, it was just easier to do a longer day a, yes. a, a, and grind that out. And you're still able to retain as much, but now that you're spread across all these different days, it, it just makes it very, very inconvenient. Very yeah, I mean, there's well, just factually year, also more LEC than there was before. LEC used to be two days a week, LCK most too. of the week. LCK and now it's, as well. And now it's a super week every single week. So, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, LCK has more games now, and doesn't LCS? LCS just LCS was a bunch of Super matrix. Weeks. Okay, okay. All right, bunch so so LCK and LEC, games. I don't know about LPL. Uh, LCK and LEC have more games this year. Um, and and then what else uh, also ended up happening? What am I? What am I? What am I blanking on? No, I mean, there's going to be blank. Asian games. Like there's just there's more league this year. There's there's going to be Asian games. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, it's a I just lot blanked. of stuff. I'm sorry. Digon, what, is what, it is? Oh, Digon, what did what did you say? I had it when you were talking. Uh, uh the, across the multiple different days. That's basically what I was saying. Rather oh, than... oh, right, right. Okay, yeah, nice, nice. Okay, so last year, if you did all three regions, you had you had a day and a half off yeah. per week. Well, you had like unless you did LPL because LPL runs on Monday and Tuesday as well. Okay, okay, all right. So for for me, I had <laughs> I'd finish yeah. Monday morning, so I would finish Monday morning. And then I would have the rest of Monday off, and then I would have all of Tuesday off, and then I would resume on Wednesday. Right? That was that was last year. Yeah. This year, you finish on Tuesday morning, and then you have to go to sleep early-ish because of the way the schedule works, because of the time zones. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't really have it. I have like half a day off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. And so the the point is, there we go. Now you you helped me get to the point. We helped each other yeah. here on this one, Alice. The point nice. is. If originally, when they set 12 p.m. noon p, uh, Pacific Coast time as the time to start so that you could get a more global audience, a more European audience. And now mm-hmm. here are two of the thought leaders that watch Global League of Legends saying this was way harder to do. What was the learnings? What was the point of putting this on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, rather than just doubling up and having L- Well, I mean, it's for Valorant, right? There. Wasn't that always what it was? It was always for Valorant. It was never for the health of, of League. And I think that they sacrificed LCS. I mean, you look at viewership numbers in LCS, you can see that it's it's a sacrifice. And I would I would also say that I think that, that the if you look at, like, the games played, these last two splits of LCS... These were more fun splits than the previous splits that we had yep. in like the end of like 2022, for example. Like 2022, you didn't really care about like half the teams in the league were here. I mean, you had more storylines. You have double lift back in the league. I mean, in spring, you had double lift Bjergsen. Right. You have like the super team in FlyQuest. I mean, like almost every single team is watchable, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think that, that that just shows how weird it is that the viewership is down this much like this is crazy i mean the, the stream is almost never hitting over 50k at this point yeah uh the i think the content that the broadcast team was making was a lot better like they were trying things think about like the static shiv like shiller into yeah, that was a really meme good. of the static shiv thing with with azale like they found a lot of creativity on the broadcast uh creative team which is why I feel like this is a question for Global. This is a question for Nas. This is a question for John Needham. These are uh, things that need to get answered. Otherwise, the narrative that Dom just said is the one that's going to uh, just just be the answer, well, which is this got sacrificed. On, on the topic of um, you know the people that are doing it globally and stuff, right? I think Riot's argument would be that it's not for people like me and Dom and Yamato. It, it's for like the regional people, right? That Correct. would be their that's argument. Right. Yeah. So like Correct. their LEC time shift is meant for Europeans. Their right. NA time shift is meant for North Americans, right? The whole thing that's that, that, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, the whole thing that's great about being a league fan is you don't have to just watch your own teams. Like you can watch the teams that are the best in the world, and you can enjoy teams in other regions that that you really enjoy. Like that should be what the benefit is of having a global league and having all these these streams all these official english speaking broadcasts on twitch for people now you have like right. the french stream that's doing all the leagues itself you have all these co-streamers doing it is that you should be able to fall in love with 
not just like these people are from my region what type of league of legends do you like and hopefully someone out there plays it like for me the reason i'm an omg fan is because i really like the way they play league of legends like a lot of the things that i enjoy the most about the game are embodied by their play style so and also you have like all these international tournaments so people want to be updated on different leagues people don't want to only be lcs fans like the people that are really fans of league esports they want to have a little bit of everything and it's just like hard for them to consume and for a lot of the the viewers that I've seen like European viewers were actually watching a lot of LCS before, but I know a lot of European viewers because my, my chat is mainly European are starting to be like, all right, well then I'm just going to watch LCK, LPL, LEC and fuck LCS. Like they're not going to be that competitive anyway. So that's going to be the one that we stop watching if it's not conducive to our schedules. Yeah. Uh, here, I had to find the quote, but here's the quote from Nas. The original tune, ooh, the original noon start time was intended to maximize the available audience for the LCS, for which would the have been English better speaking community. Again, we saw how fans were feeling about it, so we wanted to make sure we were accommodating North American fans first and foremost. So, uh, this goes to what you said there, uh, LS. This was with North American fans in mind. The reason why they pushed it right. to two, and to be right. fair, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. I was also one of those guys that was like, "This makes no sense." But right. now that we've pulled the curtain back, it you, you see what's left. And now you have to con you have to either take the the hard truth which is, wow, there's only like 30 to 50,000 like fans that watch LCS on Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays from North America and assume that this is mostly North American fans. But also then you kind of wonder what happened to Saturday. What if, what if we picked a better time for Saturday Sundays for like LCS fans or for North American fans? Like is it that which one is it? Which one is it? Or maybe it's both, right? I don't know. I think the, the reality of the situation is that the two hours is not going to make a huge change for LCS fans, but it makes a massive difference for LEC fan, for European LCS fans. And a lot of European LCS fans just don't have the ability. If you're playing games on Wednesday, people have real jobs at this point. The League of Legends audience is mainly in their 20s at this point. So you have you can't just be up until 4 a.m. watching LCS. Like It just doesn't work out for, for Europeans. One of the things that I don't understand is so way back in the day in um, in Starcraft as well as like Warcraft three right Korea uh, I'm not familiar with China they used to have their matches start at night specifically because people would get out of work and then they would watch Starcraft um, you know and and Warcraft three and stuff why does Riot not have night starts they have it for like other regions. You mean like games start at uh, the the best of one starts at like six p.m. seven p.m. and then wraps up at like midnight. Yeah, quite literally that. Why why does that not happen? I mean, they have that in Europe, right? That's essentially what Europe's schedule is. Starts at six that... p.m. every day. Six? I thought it was five. I thought Europe's like four or five. No. Uh, it's six. Is it six? Can they not go later? Can they not do seven? I mean, then like the games end at midnight. I mean, the, I think the idea is like six to eleven is the night is the europe league hmm. like that's the what time what, zone. what is re, what is real time sports slot. do like well i, I i'm yeah, gonna that, so there's yeah, gonna be some people that get mad when i just said it like that but nah. everyone obviously knows what i mean physical um, sport body sports yeah yeah what what are Meat physical sport. sports do uh, the, uh, the, it depends on the the sport yeah. but generally what it is is it's like night starts during the weekday and then on weekends they'll have like games that start as early as like noon yeah and it depends on like the time zone or whatnot. So sometimes if it's a West Coast team, you know, match will start at 4 p.m. their time, and that's 7 p.m. like in the East Coast. But uh, the only other thing that starts that late that I can think of are like uh, combat sports, MMA, or like boxing. The fight is at midnight, generally. <laughs> like that's when the fight starts. Or I guess if you're in the West Coast, 9 p.m., but still, they're used to a late schedule and that kind of thing. I don't think there's a like a like a law or production overhead law that's like, hey, if we you have to pay the camera people, you have to pay the the union people like double time if they're working past midnight, no matter if it's their first hour or their eighth so, hour. I don't I don't know of any law like that. But, in, in in Korea, uh, something like that does exist, which yeah. is like what? Yeah, Korea, Korea gets uh well. Not with Korea, but I think the way that like contracts are in Korea is like, um, you can only go over midnight if you have a cast the next day or like you have a match the next day and you have to be there. Yeah. Because then they just claim that you're just being paid for that day anyway. 
Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, it's weird. Yeah. So just things to think on. And, and I appreciate both of you guys going down this, this rabbit hole a little bit of like news about the LCS rather than getting into the games right away. Just because right. it, it, it was such a unique year and a unique split with the walkout, with the delay of the season. And uh, also people could have said, well, we've got like that month after the LCS championships. Why don't you just push the season back? They have the agreement with uh, New Jersey with, with the finals over at Prudential yeah. Center. You, you couldn't push that back. There's just no way to do that. Like th those things are planned out a year in advance. So right. um, this, this was, I think the, the best of a difficult situation that the LCS kind of put themselves in and here we were. Um, a couple more news things that kind of came up. One, not sure if you guys saw, Doublelift had internal bleeding. He was, um, oh, gee, yeah, what the he fuck? Was in the hospital. Yeah, crazy. It, you saw on camera this last couple of weeks, he looked labored, like a little, like I went, like sick, but playing through it. Um, and, and tweeted out a, a couple of things about it before we found out what it was. But then he had internal bleeding for almost a week. So kind of, kind of a crazy thing like that uh, dumb yeah. have you had a teammate that's had like a like an injury or, or a sickness like that that they've had to either no i mean those times when about? i was playing with piglet where i thought i had internal bleeding but that was actually just the <laughs> that was actually just the experience of playing in those games so <laughs> lovely what did you expect when you asked me that question? Like, I what don't else know. would you I play fucking for say? a while and then maybe why maybe... would I have an experience with internal? Like, that's so specific. That what internal bleeding with like an injury or sickness that you, people didn't find out until later. Uh, I mean, I I had panic disorder my whole career, from or well, not my whole career from from season four summer to season five. But I don't know. I just fucking I don't know. I just pushed through it, and then at the like I don't know. It stopped affecting me after about like my first month dealing with it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, just best thoughts over to double lift, uh, on that. And hopefully that gets taken care of and he's okay to go. Kind of interesting if he's not able to go unforgiven, no longer the backup AD carry. Who is the backup AD carry for a uh, hundred thieves? I'm going to go. Look. Do they have, do they one? have a backup AD carry? I mean, they don't have an Academy team. Yeah. I don't who's, think they have a backup AD carry, bro. Who's available. What do you do uh, in that situation? So interestingly, they only have here. one sub. Oh. <clears throat> so if you look at the GCD, Ooh. certain person with the name Milan <laughs> is still <laughs> somehow listed on a hundred thieves. So. So wait. You know? So is well on on Leaguepedia. Obviously, the GCD is more accurate, but on Leaguepedia, they also have Jenkins, my boy Thomas Tran. Um, so. Yeah, let me look at let me look at North America right now because one of the things that ended up happening, um, I, I don't know if you guys saw it. It was like at the very beginning of last week, uh, Joseph Jong, the general manager of One Hundred Thieves, denied it, um, but then Evie just doubled down on Twitter. But apparently, One yep. Hundred yep. Thieves missed the roster lock, and they had tried to add Biofrost to One Hundred yep. Thieves. Um, mm -hmm. And then Joseph Dong denied it on Twitter, and then Evie just came in and said, you know, I have many, many trusted sources. Um, this was what was going on. Um, and then Joseph Dong never replied. So, sure. you know, uh, so, yeah, I mean, on, on 100 Thieves, I guess Nuke Duck, right? Technically? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. How they could play AD slide. carry and nuke duck play mid. Yeah, oh. that's what I was going to Oh, wait, say. no, that's they have no way. Oh, no, no, no. Closer, closer. No, they can't even use nuke duck now. Because quit and closer. Oh, shit, yeah. Oh, my God. Important. Oh. Okay, and now the other people on the GCD for 100 Thieves, uh, two of them are in Korea. Like, not Milan. Uh, Sniper is in Korea, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and I it's, think it's okay. I mean, like we've seen last time when there was an issue with you know a certain player not being able to <laughs> play a match, um, that these rules can be changed at a moment's notice in order to allow the competition to go on. So, mm, okay, yeah, and okay, uh, 
I feel like the the whole premise of that change before, uh, obviously Dom talking about Danny and uh, the evil geniuses situation, the, the premise for that was player health. And this is physical player health here with, right. with clear, very clear um, evidence of it. Uh, yeah, if, if they're going to... Right. If they're going to do that for EG, then they'll do it for Under Thieves, obviously. Dang, what do you do here? I can't believe they don't have another AD carry. They have three top laners, a coach, but no AD carry listed on their roster. Look, yeah. all I'm going to say is if you look at Tenacity's OPGG, he was spamming a lot of Zaya and Kaisa. Like... <laughs> Okay. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, was he yeah. really? <laughs> yeah, he was. He actually he gave up on playing top lane. Yeah, he said top lane's useless role. And so yeah. play, he he uh, joined the sack and gave us the lowdown. He's like, yeah, top yeah. lane is useless role. It's better to just play Kaisa and Zaya. Yep. Well, look. Here's the question. Since it feels like Hundred Thieves has been playing four v five every single game with closest performance, will they actually Jeez. count him as an import if Nuke Duck does play? Like, does he count as, like, a player? Like, is it just going to be, like, uh... Like... Bjergsen's actually going to come back and just play jungle. I can see it. Yeah. Maybe it's time. Yeah. That, He's that... still around, right? He still appears at LCS? He no. did the first week, I think. No. Oh, okay. I, I, I have not seen him other than, yeah, that very first week. Um, but he lives in NA. Lives in LA, yeah, I'm pretty sure. From what I've heard, it, it just, okay. it really seems like he's, he's done. He, he the, really the grind the grind that he loved he no longer loves you know because okay. we we've talked about the work ethic and, and and everything that the example that soren set as a professional being the best and uh from what i heard it sounded like it was it just no longer was fun it was no longer the thing that he wanted to do which is, okay. is the thing so um and all this again mm -hmm. is is hypothetical if uh double lift isn't okay to go uh by the time that they they have their match and their matches when is it when is their match they they have a, a week and a half so they don't play this first round they play the lower bracket second round so they, there <laughs> is 10 days there by the time that we get this recording up um, right okay the other piece of news that i saw on reddit uh shout outs to na men and amen the other uh one of the north american podcasts with uh a, a lot of folks on there that that are a lot more positive about the lcs than we are i've uh, literally never heard of this before in my life yeah it's mm. Arsh. it's it's arsh's uh podcast oh arsh well i like that guy i, I know you love that guy um uh, name arsh, arsh, podcast arsh is, arsh is good so he got the um he got an interview with Spica, and Spica. The comment there that kind of came out of it was socially, I think this is one of the least social teams I've been on. It felt a lot harder to connect with someone who doesn't really speak your language, understand the culture aspects of America. It just felt different. Uh, a little bit of the curtain being pulled back on, on FlyQuest. A lot of things happened on that team. And I think this is just uh, one more thing that you've been pounded on for such a long time here dom it, it, it yes there's a language barrier but the game of league of legends has its own language and you should be able to play it if that's not working out then you don't even have the the language barrier being able to be homies to to fall back on here how did you yeah. feel about this quote i mean i definitely think it helps when you're when you like the people on your team when you are invested in the success of your teammates and it's more of a like collective rather than everyone playing their own thing and at a point on FlyQuest it just felt like a bunch of individual people playing together it didn't feel like there was a, a team really um and it was sad to see because even when it's super team fails in North America I mean it's normally good enough to at least make it to playoffs like playoffs is never a question because you normally have like four or five like really really not good teams um in LCS and I would argue that you still have that this split like TSM Dignitas Immortals Hundred Thieves those should not be considered like too good to beat and normally you'll be able to get away on just a individual skill alone so when i looked at this flight quest roster i thought that this this is inconceivable for me they, they could not make playoffs when eight teams are making playoffs <laughs> you think about the team liquid failure last last season that was another super team failure that we had mm. 
similar to this. But even when Team Liquid was failing, it's like they still were one game away from making Worlds, you know? Like, they were still a top four team. This yeah. is a inexplicable failure. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it, it was just a combination of, of, of multiple things. I think that people were playing individually worse. I don't think that there was any identity. And when, I think what was so weird is you have a bunch of players that know how to, like, win in North America. I almost view North America as, like, a special region to win in. Um, where you don't need to be like a top team in the world to win in North America. Generally, what you need to do is you have to understand how the game is played here and just draft well. There's not there's normally like when you get to the end, there's not insane amounts of fighting, good setups, like OP champs, and just play around objectives, and that's normally how you win. And you looked at FlyQuest and you're like, okay, they have impact, they have speaker. They have Vulcan. They have multiple champions on this team. How are they not going to be able to just, like, know what to do to win LCS games? Like, play some Maokai, get to the objective early, throw some saplings, put some wards down. A team like TSM, a team like Dignitas, a team like 100 Thieves will just walk into you, flank them, and just, like, win the game. And I just didn't see that, that out of FlyQuest at all. It just felt like they were losing every single um, objective situation. Their lading was mediocre to bad. Uh, there was almost no redeemable qualities of this team. I mean, this has to go down as the biggest failure um, uh, of a team ever in the region. How do you feel about it, LS? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with Dom that th this is the largest failure that has ever happened um, for, for a team. When you consider also like the amount of money that this team cost, um, putting it together and everything like that. Now, the other thing that Dom said is it's not... It, it, well, I made my own tweet, right? Which was that it, it's actually impossible to not make playoffs in an A um, with any team. Uh, like, that that's my own belief. <laughs> All is 10 that teams you, make it. <laughs> well, no, what, what I mean is like... I, I know it, you it, mean. Yeah, it, it's really hard to not make playoffs <laughs> in this region. Like, I, yep. I just... You can't. And one of the things that, like, I would point towards is, like, it, Revan on TSM... Um, he clearly just has like an idea of how he wants to go about things. And I mean, he's on like uh, my streams pretty often, right? He was on every MSI stream. Uh, he joins for LCK sometimes, joins for LEC sometimes, etc. right? And he just talks about it. And it seems like he's very cognizant, especially with his interviews with like Degon and stuff um, that, you know, he's ended up doing and stuff. He's pretty straightforward with just telling it like it is and what he thinks is actually going on. Um, he does not have the best players at all, anywhere, in any role. And yet TSM is still able to actually make top six, almost actually made it higher than that. And if not for like the Ruby fiasco, <laughs> you know, like that stuff's fucking crazy. That's going on. So for FlyQuest, um, to like conclude this point, like obviously uh, as someone that is a part of FlyQuest, uh, I don't know, it, it feels a little bit weird to be as harsh as I am, but... When Dom's saying that there's no identity, yeah, there's no fucking identity. There's absolutely zero identity. It literally looks like there is no coaching whatsoever going on. There's no direction. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing here. You have Spica going on stage literally not knowing what his runes are on Ivor and, and doesn't even know how to clear. And then when I talk to him, he literally just says that he researches everything himself. And I'm like, what the fuck? What, what, is, what is going on with... Um, you know, because obviously, like, I had the tweet. Uh, Adam, he replied to me, had it on Discord, and and all that good, other good jazz. So, look, man, I, I don't know. Like, it's, like, hard for me to... I, I want to say something, but I think people would take it too inflammatory, even sure. though I think that I am just speaking a matter-of-factly. Um, DRX should not have made Worlds last year, okay? DRX also looked lost. If yep. Zeka doesn't go Super Saiyan at Worlds... Nothing happens. Okay, so then what else happened? I mean, think uh, about songs. Think about songs' career, man. Like, I'll I'll just say it. Song is does not have a good track record. If you look at at the teams that he's coached, and you think about like, okay, twenty like those twenty seventeen Immortals, that was his good run, and then he had twenty twenty eighteen TSM, which was not good. He had twenty nineteen Echo Fox, which was not good. He had twenty twenty CLG, which was also not good. And then he had DRX for years before they had some success. Like it wasn't this is he does not have a track record where you're like, damn, he's suddenly like some super genius of a coach. It's it looks like sometimes his teams just like end up clicking, but like it's normally like players popping off. Like and when you and when you look at how DRX played the game, there was nothing that showed me that he was some type of genius coach. Like when I looked at that team. 
I thought a lot of the genius of the team came from the players. Like you're telling me that Song came up with like this barrel Heimer strategy or some shit. Like that's gotta be a player driven thing. That's gotta be Barrel playing it in solo queue and being like, you know what? This could work really well. Like he's just always been that type of player. So when I'm looking at this team, like, I, I don't know. I feel like Song is just not, he, he is just not a good coach. Like, part of being a coach is being able to band-aid and get out of shit situations. You can't just be at the mercy of, like, your player. Oh, your players are, like, not playing well. How do you band-aid this situation to get your team to playoffs? Like, what are the changes that you make? And then you look at, like, the roster things that they did, which he probably has some control over. I hope he is. I hope to God he has some control over roster. They play with Sparax for one game. Then they bring back Vikla. It made no sense. Like, this team just... It couldn't have gotten so, worse than this. Uh... As someone that's a part of FlyQuest, uh, I, I just want to like preface this. I do not actually know if this is true. I have not asked FlyQuest. No one on FlyQuest coaching staff or like you know upper management, etc., has told this to me. Um, this is something that I heard elsewhere. Apparently, uh, Vikla's benching was self done. So I, I don't even know what that means. Th <laughs> like uh, Vikla, Vikla asked means. to be subbed out. Yeah, I mean. I mean, okay. that happens sometimes. Right, right. But I'm, I'm only saying this in response to, like, what you were, you were saying, right? Where the, the Spear X comes in and Vikla's out. I mean, I feel like there's a... Maybe Vikla completely mental boomed. Like, I can't, I can't know yeah. for sure what happened. But I feel like he a coach's job is to try to figure out how to get them in a headspace to compete. Like, right. normally, players get like this because of repeated failures, feeling lost, the, like, pressure of everything, right. and just not having, like, a way to, like, they, they need that release. They need that, like, one-game release where they feel like they can, you know, breathe and, and take a break. Like, I feel like this whole team was just, like, under so much stress from the beginning. Like, they were fighting for their lives from the fucking beginning. Like, where were... What was the... Okay, what can a coach do? He can instill some level of identity within the team or at least try to bridge everyone's ideas together. It's like, what? Okay, this is how all my players think. This is what they want to play. How do I find some like common line through what they can do so that we have some semblance of a, a, a draft that makes sense, some semblance of an identity that's going to work versus the teams that we play against? And then when you look at how FlyQuest preps for other teams, like I don't see any... It's like they almost don't watch other teams' games. When you go into the draft phase... It feels like other teams just get their best champions every time against FlyQuest. So, I don't know. It's very hard to watch to watch Song here, the coaching, and be like, this is not an issue. And generally, if you have a super team and you fail to this degree, like, the coach is just going to get fired. That's just how it works every time. I assume the same thing is going to happen for Vitality. You just can't have players this good and have a performance this bad. It has to fall on coaching in some way. Yeah, and it feels like, I think if you're a... GM, it feels like it's easier to find uh, uh, someone else to lead the way than it is to find other talent that can compete because you know all of these guys can. We've seen it, and I think that's why this is one of the most frustrating puzzles uh, that 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 didn't get solved in the history of the LCS. Yeah, I think that one of the most important jobs for a coach, and I remember Max Waldo even said this when he was coaching Cloud Nine, one mm -hmm. of the most important jobs for a coach is being able to fix problems. Like, right. you are a problem fixer within the team. And obviously, yeah. you want to be able to teach the game. You want to be able to elevate things. But you have to fix the problems with you your team. You have to be able to unify. Yeah. Yeah. And be able to unify the team. And it felt yeah. like none of the problems got fixed. What problems got fixed the entire year? The lanes were still bad. The drafts were still bad. The drafts were bad the entire time. So, like, I don't know how much you want to put on a coach. Obviously, I'm not somebody who puts it all on the coach. Because I know for a fact, from my own experience, that drafts are somewhat player driven in a lot of teams like players have things that they want to play and you want to work in what they want to play with things that make sense and you know try to put them in a, in a spot where what they're good at actually is good also in the game but these drafts are like so bad that it's like i, I can't put it all on the players i don't think the players are like yes we have to we have to in draft every single game song and the song's like well i know all the perfect drafts but i'm just gonna let you in for like some reason i i, I mean he didn't fix any of the problems within the team he didn't fix the problems with setups he didn't fix the problems with the drafts he didn't fix the problems in laning nothing got fixed they were it looked like they were on their own yeah it looks I mean, like they're on their own no, I know. So yeah, so the comparison, the you know, the 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 not the mirror, but you know what I mean, like the the Revan thing that I talked about. At least when you watch TSM, there 
is an yes. identity there. Yes, they play the game. Like they all yes. are There's buying an into the same idea of how they yes. want to play the yes, game. Yes, that's yes, yes, that's yes. the identity right there. I 100% agree. Yes. Yep. There at least is an identity. There is there is you you can see it and you can also see that it's improving over time and that's one of the the things that I've always pointed out when people bring up coaches, right? Because especially in fucking Korea, man. They just assume team winning coach good. No. Yes. That doesn't make any yes. fucking that's sense. It's, it's total no conjecture. Sense. If the coach has no public content, I don't want to ever hear a comment that they're good or bad. The only way that I'd ever want to hear a comment that they're good or bad is when they ha uh, have multiple instances of different teams or even yep. one team that 100%. has a really, really clear identity, even if players keep changing. Because that but has to be coming from one focal point. And it's it's mind blowing that people don't fucking realize this, uh, and then people like yourself and me and others are villains for for trying to point this out that like logically the way that these people are reaching conclusions is not accurate. Um, it's gonna be a fucking long winter for FlyQuest, man. Six months off yep. is crazy. Yep. Uh, on top of that, it, just to take a step back, remember this is. The team with the largest injection of money that has come in to the LCS, right? Like energy's come in and they've kind of been a, a little bit more hands off with their approach. We don't know if they're going to spend more, if they're going to, I assume they'll probably change the roster next year unless they literally make a deep run at Worlds. But even then, you, you probably have like money to spend for energy. But FlyQuest came in and they they spent the money. They invested in the the yep. team. They invested in the space. They invested uh, uh, in their content. Them and uh, so FlyQuest and and Immortals uh, bowed here in the playoff stages uh, before the playoff stages, and and we'll have a a long off season to answer things. Also, just again another shout out to uh, the the longest standing member of of the LCS, the oldest member in the LCS. Solo, uh, Zolo on Immortals. Everyone else has their contract <laughs> run until November 23rd. Uh, uh, Immortals couldn't wait to get rid of him. They've removed his contract today. Damn! <laughs> like yesterday. Wait, what the what? fuck? Yeah, like yeah, they're not paying. Wait, they're that? not paying him for the. They knew they were going to Cancun early, so they're not paying him for the last six months. <laughs> they gave him a two month contract. They gave him a fucking seven week contract for a full split. Nah, that's too insane. I respect the wait, fuck out of that. Where where is that? Look, if you look both on Leakpedia and then double check it on the uh, global contract the database, he, he's no longer in the global contract database, and it's part of recent moves here. Uh, what on the, the main fuck? page of Leakpedia. Uh, he got <laughs> removed July 21st. So on Friday. So the season ended Friday and they're like, thanks, bud. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what, what is the the going fuck? on over there? There's just no one. Ugh, I guess. So like, okay. I think Immortals is Parth's team now. He's consulting with them. Tonnington, the former general manager of... Uh, I guess assistant general manager of TSM while Parth was still part of TSM is there. And then Parth consults, but also has his uh, Saito.gg, which is a company that helps teach coaching and educate more on esports and is helping run Game Changers. Uh, I, he is pulling strings there, but I, they just don't have a face for who's pulling strings there, you know? So uh, a move like that is kind of interesting and funny. It was Solo and Joey. Joey's been in the in the north american scene for a long time was a support player and has shifted to coaching for a while um both of them being removed from the gcd kind of interesting to see what what that was about if it was requested i i'd imagine it's not requested because then you just no paycheck right there so um anyway and they didn't remove anyone else so we'll see for both those squads as uh yeah just kind of funny Funny little way that they do work. Also, to note, everyone on FlyQuest is under contract for 2024, except the man that they signed in the middle of the split, Vulcan, will be a free agent uh, coming up this offseason. So uh, kind of an interesting look here that this team could you know, possibly have just speak uh, an impact on the roster left. I assume Vickla and Prince were just not having a great experience and, and or a great result. Great. Result. I wonder what Prince's value right now is if he goes back to Korea. 
I feel like, I feel like if he goes back to Korea, Koreans will be like, that's not Prince's fault. I think if Vikla goes back to Korea, I think you have to go prove it on a challengers team and be ready to sub in. I mean, I'm just trying to think about like where he would actually fit in. Like, on a I mean, maybe he goes back to Sandbox, honestly. Maybe Teddy just <laughs> calls it quits or some shit. I don't know. I just look at the, the rosters. I don't know if there's like a open spot. Yeah, an open spot on a decent team. You got to remember, Sandbox, Sandbox was not a bad team. Like, obviously, they didn't make Worlds and DRX Miracle Run happened, but they were like a pretty right. good team in 2022. Yeah. Like, in summer, they looked like they, like, they were, there was a point in the season where people were like, are they the second best team? Or could they even be the best team? I mean, they were 13 to 5. That team was actually legit. They're a pretty interesting team, obviously. Like, Prince was one of the people that could pull out, like, the Nila. He had just, like, all these pocket picks. Like, that team was legit. And most people expected them to be going to Worlds. And yeah, I mean, obviously shit hit the fan here, but I'm just so surprised that that it could get this bad this fast. Like hey, this man. guy was considered one of the best AD carries in Korea. Right. If you look at like All Pro, for example, if you look at All Pro, which obviously doesn't mean the most, but I think it's generally, I think it generally shows how, you know, people are perceived at least by the community. And like, Prince was considered really good. He was all pro second team. Like this is when, when the Zeri split happened, obviously and Guma was nowhere close to like that conversation because he essentially just could never really play Zeri. And mm -hmm. you know, it was, he was considered top two it was ruler. And then Prince, those guys were the two fucking hyper carry. Give them Zeri, the one V nine players in the league. I'm looking right here. Uh, Guma's contract is up after this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw it out there baby this is a rebuild year around the uh, november 17th 2025 faker yet again Just no 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 they will uh, i Guma will stay on t1 i think i when, when you, I, i've been watching every t1 game because they've been losing every game and i only watch when they lose so i've been watching every <laughs> single game and um I, I can say that guma is probably the best performing player on that team after like faker got subbed mm. yeah yeah i guess and well what if Guma doesn't want to stay, right? It's a free agency. That's what this is. Like, you have the opportunity. Like it, it, Guma said so many times that he wants to stay on T1, though. All right. In interviews? Yeah. He, like, I, I remember seeing something where he, like, said, like, he wants to be the legacy player of T1. I don't think that's mm. happening. <laughs> 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 I think I'm just... yeah, I mean, <laughs> not after this fucking break from Baker. <laughs> <laughs> this this oh, break has been God. like so good for Faker's career, you know, because I think that there was a, there was a narrative before. I mean, I was even a part of it. Where I was like, how valuable is Faker actually to T1? Like, how much of the shot calling does he actually do? You know, is he like because his champion pool was something that was somewhat of a liability, and now you see T1 without Faker, you're like, God damn, man, is Faker just is he the goat right now? Is he the best player in the world right now? How could the team look this shit without him? Yeah. Oh man. Well. uh Again, we'll, we'll see what happens here with Prince and, and, and what, what his career will hold for him. It, it is a long offseason as FlyQuest and Immortals are, uh, join Vitality. And uh, who's the other team that, that got knocked out in, in LEC already? Uh, as the first teams to be eliminated from world's contention. Who is it? I'm trying to look. Is it Koi? Is it Koi out? I think it's Koi. Yeah, I can't really remember. Yeah, championship points. Who it is? Uh, no, it's Astralis. It's Astralis. It's Astralis. Yeah. All right. A um, couple more things. Man, just because I got thinking about it, since there was such an influx of, of investment by FlyQuest, which team do you feel like got the most like bang out of their buck in terms I think it's, of it's gotta be, uh, rosters? It's got to be Golden Guardians. You think it's Golden Guardians? Not Dig? Yeah, I mean, Dig is going to go out in first round, I think. Golden uh, Guardians, I, like, if you think about how, like, Golden Guardians, their team, like, they, they, they got Gory coming from PCS. They had already, they got River last year. That's probably the one that they paid for. Licorice yeah. was inting for years. 6A is somebody, there's no way 6A is getting, like, a big contract. I mean, who yeah. he was probably decent to pay, like, they probably had to pay him decent, but he didn't have, like, insane value. He was considered one of the weakest members of 100 Thieves. And then yeah. the team is actually top two, and they look like a solid, like, good top two. They have to have got the most bang out of their buck. They went to MSI. 
They're probably going to make another finals. They're going to go to another international tournament. Yeah. Like, this is Golden Guardians, man. Golden Guardians has been like a dog shit org since the beginning. Sorry, Degon, but they've been a dog shit org since they joined the league. They've never what, had what any I hate modicum about this of is that you're holding back your laughter while doing that, man. Come on. <laughs> I said what I said. Yeah, I know. Uh, it, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, my bad. But I blame the other guys, but it's mostly my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, I blame them completely, but it's my bad for sure. It's my bad, sure. Yeah. Um, God, just fucking unionize and make your salaries public so we can do a calculation. I would <laughs> love that. I, I just, Girl. the, uh, like, it's like what they do in baseball, right? The money ball calculations. The Maybe money ball calculator. Um, See who else? Who else's roster looks not expensive? TSM, EG. The TSM's playing for an extra player. EG. Yeah, that's probably it. Actually, that's probably it. twelve and six. One yep. one win off of Golden Guardians. That's probably the cheaper roster. Revenge just Revenge might be the most expensive player, and he was just looking to get a team to play with. So yeah, wait. I mean, like one thing that I keep on bringing up that that hasn't like clicked in people's brains is that Revenge wanted to play with Immortals this split. He <laughs> wanted to stay on that team, right? And Immortals chose Solo over him. They could have taken both and then it was all up to Immortals. Who do we want on our team, Solo or Revenge? And they chose Solo and gave Revenge away. And look at how they ended up. You can't tell me that Revenge wouldn't have been good for this team. Like the Kenvi Solo top jungle, oh my God. That I was- I feel like it was always Solo's fault, man. It was just an invisible top jungle, man. It's an invisible top jungle. Where at least the way Revenge plays the game gives Kenvi something to do. But Kenvi just felt like, I mean, he was completely homeless to split. Didn't know where to be. Like, it was just, he was just wandering the map, man. He was wandering the map. Like, he couldn't even find his camps. It was terrible. Um, interviews with Coach Mabry and then a joint interview with uh, Balulu and Tactical coming out this week on the channel. So you can take a look at that and, and see it was it was it was good. It was it was it was a nice chat with Immortals players. Let's go to uh we're running up on time here. Let's go to our uh, LCS awards. Um we'll start with most improved player. I had to vote on these last night, so I already locked it in and I kind of I did my best. I kind of don't fully remember because it was late and I almost forgot. But most improved player, who do you got here uh on this one? Okay, so I don't actually think this is the most... Uh, this is just for the split, right? Only for the split? This most improved player is for the split. So I don't think that this is actually the player that improved the most, but I think that the reward, the award, the way that things go, should probably go to Revenge. Because Revenge, yes. like, I think that this is, like, a very good split for him. And even though he was probably good on Immortals, like, it looked like he couldn't show it. So if you look at, like, the, the delta bet between performances, I think that... That's the biggest one, right? So that's kind of how I see Revenge as the the most improved. Even though that's I think so, he was actually good on Immortals. That's so funny because when I was filling this one out, I was like, I feel like Dom's going to say something about this. Like, he's going to pick the winner, but not exactly who he thought was the most improved player. Do you uh, have the same? Yeah, I have uh, the same. I mean, I, I think insanity is a pretty good argument, no? Yeah, but he didn't play a lot. But he didn't. Yeah. Does, does, can you be, be most improved if you didn't play last split? Yes. Uh, yes. This uh, is just oh. for the split. Oh, I right. see what you mean. I see what you like mean. most Stop. improved from what? Like, how did the, how do you know how much he improved? Like, I thought that improved right. meant that you like played before and then like you played like last split and then you who improved the most from last split to this split. That's like how, kind of how I saw it. Mm. That's a good point. I, I think it was the delta from what we thought they were. Like, how do we define improve? Like, is Ken V improving by like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> you know, like, you know, like moving towards the. <laughs> you know, like, he's improving the league by getting himself fired. I guess. Like that's. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, how are we defining this? You know. He improved tactical a lot by you know just giving him a huge weight to carry. <laughs> like tactical is going to be unleashed next split. Come on, man. Leave my Filipino brother alone. He already had a tough fucking split. All right. Come on. Bro, he left everyone alone the entire split. Like, he <laughs> didn't gank one guy. Like, I'm sorry, Ken. I tried, man. Uh, give me your, your, your top three. Because we had to vote on three here. Uh, I'll go Revenge. I'll go Palafox. 
throw him in there. Good one. Um, who else? Look through the There's rosters. Insanity, revenge, Palafox, no? If Insanity is quali- like able to be, yeah. he's eligible, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, so the Palafox call out is good because actually, you'll see why later. I I uh, I went with tactical. I thought. I <laughs> oh, oh, tactical is good. Yeah, tactical is yeah. a good one. Revenge, insanity, tactical. I, I think the impact that insanity had on this roster to to lead to wins was just so oh. so clear. It was so clear. So I mean, I, if Ruby played all eighteen games, FlyQuest is in playoffs, baby. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, uh, they were doing their best uh, TSM with Ruby, um, I guess, impression. Four losses in a row here for TSM going into playoffs, but not so yep. great. Rookie of the split. This one was pretty troll because it's rookie of the year. And yeah. So, <laughs> when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, 100 Thieves has three players on this? Because one Quinn. of them double left? <laughs> no, you got oh, okay. Quinn. You got Busio, and who else do they have, LS, from the uh, year? Quid, wait, they have Quid, they have Busio. Uh, uh-huh. He might live in your house. <laughs> what, Tenacity is on it? Yeah, Tenacity yeah. is on. He might live in your house, bro. Voting, bro. <laughs> wait, what? How is, he in, how is he in it? What? Because he played the eligible amount of games over the year and was a rookie, and they always mm. have to do this for rookie of the split because there isn't... There's no uh, rookies. Like, yeah, who's a rookie? Rookies. You know what's funny? In, in LPL, the way that rookie worked for the longest time, I don't know if it still works like this, but it was the player, it was a rookie to LPL. So, like, rookie of the split was, like, Viper when he played his first split oh. in LPL. And he's just, like, a fucking monster. He's, like, winning worlds that year. This guy is completely cracked. It's like, yep, he's the best rookie. I feel like it should just be APA. APA is a good one. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if, has he played enough games to qualify him? Yes, he did. He was on there. How many, yeah, how many games do you need to play to qualify you? uh maybe like six i think so it was eight, oh. it, there was only there was only like six players on this thing so it okay. was uh apa yawn uh and uh airy so you um, played eight games and then it was boost there was only like three teams on the list it was busio tenacity and quid uh and then there was one more maybe one or two more from another team I like APA, uh, man. I think he's uh, he's good to have. I think that it's crazy. This is this just shows how dog shit scouting was. I was talking about this guy in like 2020. I was like, this guy is legit good. At least put him in academy. See what he can do in academy. It took him two years of grinding to get into academy. He's like perma hitting rank one. And if I'm a fucking team, if I see a solo queue player who wants to play competitive and they're hitting rank one consistently, I want that guy on my academy team, right? Like I'm taking that guy over somebody like Saligo who's just like fucking academy challengers for his entire fucking career right right and and he it's two years of him grinding in grinding to be an academy and the first year that they, they give him a shot in academy he's able to go from academy to lcs and he looks legitimately good in lcs he looks like a like a top six mid laner in lcs right now uh i'm trying to find my inbox here let's see do 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 okay here's the thing i uh, I don't think I can find how I voted here. I think I went, I might've gone, a APA was third for me. So I think it was Jan Busio or Busio Jan. I had both of them in front of APA just because of how, how many much, more games. Yeah, how many played. more games they had, the consistency they had. Jan had some carry performances. Busio, like think back to the beginning of the, the year where he was trying different things and that felt very innovative. Like every interview I've had with him afterwards as well, same kind of mentality of like, he, he he's, he, he was treating it like a pro, very much treating it like a pro, not like a rookie. Um, so I, I weighted that one pretty heavily. So, uh, but yeah, those were rookies of the split. And then I think it was just all pros here. So uh, let's go. Top lane, all pro. Top uh, lane? Uh, yeah, top, top lane, lane all, all pro, pro is probably one of the hardest ones. Oh, man, that's really tough. I don't know. Does Fudge deserve to be on the list with his performances? I feel like he didn't play that well, like, this split. If you're only going to go this split, ooh. Yep. I mean, you probably go something like... 
Summit. Yep. Summit one. Oh my god. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah. Maybe like this, su Summit one. This is the hardest one, I think. Rich had a pretty bad last week. I would have put him on if it's. Is it the Summit Licorice Revenge? Is it Summit Licorice Revenge? That seems so troll. Yeah, I guess I'll go Summit Licorice Revenge. Who, who do you have, LS? Uh, I, I mean, I guess in in terms of like lane prowess, right? It's actually Summit. Um, I don't know. Like there were games where the post Reddit threads were really, really hard on Fudge, but I think that stuff he was doing in the he was in a lot of really winning states, and then he would just die for like yep. no reason. Um, but the states were so winning that it's like, it's hard to get to that state unless you're actually outplaying like really hard. Um, and then there was like, uh, there was that one game, um, I think he's on Renekton versus Jax. Uh, and there's the Sejuani gank that he fades, like playing max range, uh, even with fog of war. Um, that was really, really good star sense. Like, I think a lot of Fudge's criticisms and his random deaths that he has, because we're not getting camera pans like to top lane perma he, like yes he's dying sometimes etc still don't think that it's it, it's necessarily like less impressive than some of the other top laners who i just don't actually think are as good hmm. yeah okay um again i can't remember and there's no way for me to usually they send you like uh your results afterwards and i was emailing right. the i was emailing the um the, person that's the head of like compiling this normally we we have our votes until later in this week but for some reason they're like you need it on sunday night like at eleven fifty nine. that that never happens usually it's like tuesday or wednesday and we have time after our show to talk about it so right. i'm trying to remember what i put here i think i had summit revenge and rich i think i i gave licorice the short end of the stick just because of how 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 much rich changed this team I was like, all right. I think this one, now that I think about it, I, I think you're right, Don. This is probably should have gone to Licorice, but uh, I threw Rich in there as the top lane. Um, let's go to Jungle. I think 1-2 is pretty easy. The order of 1-2 has been a topic of discussion across all junglers. Nope. Um, River Blabber or Blabber River plus then whoever <laughs> the third is for you guys. Oh, man. Third is like really, really hard when you look at like the names and, and how people played. But I think yep. third, you probably have to go with Piotrk. Uh wait. I mean, you look at it. It's like Closure no, had a bad season. Kenvi is was terrible. Then you have Speaker who can't be there. Our mail got like literally benched because he had such a bad week. Yep. We probably would have been third if it wasn't. Yeah, for... but no. I mean, I would. I would still. I, I mean, I I think there's probably more going on in you know EG than I mean. I think our mail. I, no man, I can't give it to Pioshik. I, <laughs> I just we have to. Not I give just it to can't. Somehow. You know? let's, find, let's find some solutions. How about let's my boy Juanito? Juanito? No, he had some really bad games. I think he had that, some stinkers. He had some stinkers. Yep. That I one Maokai game that. where he was like zero eight <laughs> at fucking three minutes into the game. It's like, how is this even possible, bro? Like, how can you do this with death timers? Uh, uh, how about Boogie, nicest, nicest guy in the league, Santorin? No. No. I, no, I don't even remember. No, like honestly, I like That's actually just Pioshik. It's literally That's just it. Pioshik. If you're not putting contracts or or uh, or uh, Santorin, that's it. It's literally just Pioshik. You can't put Armeo. You can't Wait, put what the goat. fuck I mean, is wrong with champion. Top and Jungle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, Pioshik is just the goat. We have to just no, accept no, no, it. You know what? Actually, fuck it. Let's go to mid too. Let's go to mid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mid. I think we got some stuff because I would put Jojo one, <laughs> Gory two. And then I guess it's just MS3. So I had that flipped. I had Gory for all pro. I had Dude, Gory. Dude, I'd rather have APA than, than the other mid. MS? Yeah. Really? Dude, MS just fucking runs it, no? In so many games. Yeah, he uh, does run it, and his team is pretty yeah. good. But it so, also. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> like, can you imagine how hard it is to actually look bad on C9, but he manages to consistently do it? Yeah. <laughs> Even like even when he's winning, word. sometimes it's just not impressive. Uh, I think he I fell went, off. 
Gory, Jojo, and I. This is where I slid in Palafox. I had Palafox as number three here. Um, and you, I, in my opinion, I was like, there's got to be someone from Energy, right? I'm not. I can't put contracts there at number three. I agree. Uh, for Jungle, um, I think FBI had a pretty muted split. Maybe there's an argument there, but I, I, when we get to AD carry, you'll see who I slid in there. And then I, Ignar was again there, but not having the same impact. So I was like, I think this year is. I, I give that one to Palafox, but argument for MS. APA, I felt like he got blasted the last couple of weeks or last week. Right. Last week, he got blasted. I remember because I was like, do you want a sour candy after that sour performance or something like that in my interview? Um, maybe insanity as well, but he had the benching thing. So, and he also had a tough like end to the season as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I went with Palafox there. Um, but you had JoJo over Gory. Why, Tom? I mean, I think that he just has a way harder job. Also, like their head to head, I thought it was really jo JoJo dominated. I mean, when you look at at how JoJo played, right? And this is pretty much the same reason why I have him as the MVP of the league. If you look at his team without him, compare his team to any of the other teams. Like he has, uh, so uh, compare him to the other teams that are around him, right? So, EG finished twelve and six. You have C9 that finished 13 and 5, and Golden Guardians that finished 13 and 5. And if we look at rosters and we think about how everyone played, I would say that JoJo essentially has a worse player in every position. And he yeah. was able to carry so many games by just being so dominant mid. And also, when JoJo starts gapping people mid, it's like it's on a different level. He's playing lanes that are supposed to be losing or supposed to be even. And he is up 20, 30 CS, pressuring the turret, diving. Like, he is just going absolutely apeship. So that, to yeah. me, is, is what I want to see. Like, he plays the game with balls. And I like it. Uh, what was your order, uh, LS? Yeah, I, I mean, I have the same exact order as Dom, except I just have APA third. Okay. Yeah. Um, moving forward, let's go to uh, AD carry. This one, I think... Oh, I'm interested in what you guys think. Uh, go ahead, LS. Who'd you have at AD carry? I mean, I think it's... Yeah, Berserker is, is just first. Yep. Um, I think after that, it's... Unforgiven? Yeah. Probably Unforgiven. And then after that... I mean, it gets real weird after that. Um, like, the other AD carries... It, it's like... Y you have... You have Stixe... Yeah, I mean the AD carries all suck. Let's just let's just be totally honest here. They they actually all suck. And Prince is like just not having the greatest of splits. But just because he's having a bad split, it's it's like the Trimby thing, right? Where Trimby is not a bad player if you watch a stream, uh, but obviously he shit the bed. Um, or like he just he had bad split. Yeah. There's no fucking chance that I'm going to say that Prince is worse than these other ADCs. There's just no fucking way. Um, because obviously FlyQuest has a shit ton of problems and it's very evident from like their gameplay. And I don't think any of the other ADCs stand out enough to actually just place them up any higher. Wow. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like, I, I don't think that Stixe is better than Prince. But when I look at how Prince played and how Stixe played, I think Stixe played a better 18 games than Prince played. Like, even if you look at laning, I mean... Prince Vulcan, man, they were just losing lanes to like double if Busio. Like, ugh, it was just tough to watch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you didn't have to say it like that, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, that's how it feels, man. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I don't like third. I'm probably, I'm just probably going Berserker, Stixay Unforgiven, or Unforgiven Stixay. That would be my top three. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I had what you said first. I had Berserker Sticks I Unforgiven. That one I remember pretty distinctly because I didn't feel like there was someone else doing that. Other than other than Tactical. I was like, do I really put Tactical all the way up here? Nah, I can't. It's almost it. like his team is so bad that it like covered it, it, like it covered for some of his potential weaknesses. We didn't even get to see him team fight in like half the games because there's no team fights because they're losing so hard. Uh, so it's, it's interesting the, in that regard. The last couple matches, actually, I think that that playoff match against, or not playoff, but like their their tournament lives on the line <laughs> match uh, for Immortals, he 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 choked he choked some of those fights. So yep. I, that that felt really bad because 
that was the last memory of tactical on immortals for this year it was on zaya and he was like pulling feathers like way yep. like kind of crazy I, I remember that one um so berserker sticks and forgiven for me uh let's go to support this one again like i had zven who he and core jj I, I had Huhi first. I think Huhi is just much better than Sven when we get to engage beta. Mm -hmm. Like I think I think Huhi was just like running the fucking league in the last few weeks. Like he was just he's probably the most active support we have. And I think that Sven's advantage is that Sven was like better at playing enchanters, understanding like you know when to buy pink wars, so he always had mythic gold and he would always be ahead. He knew how to play with his AD carry really well. But playing Engage is a whole different thing. Playing Rakan, playing Rel is a whole different way of playing the game. And I think that that's where a lot of the habits, uh, the bad habits that supports have of like overbuying pink wards comes from because your gold just doesn't matter as much on a melee support as it does right. on like a range, a range support because range mythics are just way more broken than like even Trout, for example, even though even Trout's like a fine item. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think Kuhi was just much better than Sven. I think Sven is... Yeah, I, th I think Sven is just not that comfortable playing engage he has some games that are good some games that he's like useless sometimes he like over engages where i think who he just knows how to play how to be a playmaker so yeah that's why i have uh who he number one i have who he number one um zven number two and then number three is like pretty hard i guess i would give it to core jj doesn't feel good i think that the, that yeah i think that who he played at a higher level than everyone else but yeah that would be my top three. What do you got, Alice? Uh, oh God, I, I, I can't fucking do... I can't do a top three for... So I don't... Look, I don't have nice things to say, okay? About, about some you of the supports three, in this you league. You don't have to say nice things. You just got to say three right. names. I can't even say three. I can give you two, okay? All right, that's... All right. I need you to slot in that third. That's where the conversation is, man. Can't 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 do it can't do it. <laughs> can't fucking do it no actually we're just gonna we're just gonna skip this part okay All right, i got one, i got some one, words about it's fine before before we get all of us in trouble all right last one mvp mm -hmm. so this is where uh dom i i slid in jojo i was your your whole argument that you had for all pro <laughs> i felt like gory had better performance is integral for the team to win and was a little bit more consistent because Jojo had a couple of stinkers. But like what you said earlier, way, way harder to, to, to carry. And he looked way better in those carry performances. He looked way like a, a dominance in those carry performances. So I, I had Jojo there as number one. Uh, I had Berserker as number two. And this is where, again, transformative for a squad. I had Rich as number three. Those are my three. Yeah, I mean, I would just have no. I, I don't think we even need a number three for me. It's number one, Jojo. Number two, Blabber. And I don't think anyone else is close. It's like it's one of those things where if you came out with votes, it would be like forty nine percent of the votes are for like guy number one, forty seven for guy number two, and then like the other four percent are just like shit out right, on right, like right. this like rich guy. It's like all right, whatever. Like for <laughs> you take just take that shit. Like it's it's not even close, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is that too graphic of a way to put it like yeah just shit out the third place votes yeah yeah i mean we've all seen the you know just it's it's like we've it's like what <laughs> it's like in the united states when you have the the votes for president and you have it between like trump and biden and then there's like that random like 0.1 percent for the green party it's like ralph nader is back it's like some shit like that you know like <laughs> Like, no one gives a fuck about that guy. Like, he's not even close to the other two. It's succession for all of us adults that watch succession. It is. Um, LS, who are your top three players in the league? MVP. Mm, yeah, I, ha I mean, I have the same as... I have the same exact thing as Dom. Like, uh... I mean, it, it's really... Th this is a weird fucking summer split, guys. It really is. Like, the, the, the level of play from a lot of, like, even the the big names of yesteryears or yester splits is just not there. Um, there's very, very few players standing out. A lot of the imports were just utter failures in a lot of ways, right? Like, even Quid, uh, on like 100 Thieves, right? He was brought in, he was supposed to be high 
ladder rank, Korean solo queue, etc. He comes to NA and he just goes even in lane. Uh, or, or he losing. loses lane. Yeah, or, or loses, loses. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> he's going even or losing. He didn't do it all the time. I feel like there's an Azir game where he got a, a couple of Azir games where he had a lead that I felt like. Yeah, I mean, he became literally a Azir Jace 2 trick at a point. This is true. Yeah. This is true. This is true. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just have the same as Don. Like, I, I mean, it fucking, it sucks, man. It It sucks. All right, let's do the bet so we can get to LEC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Time for face check all in. Uh, where, uh, thanks to our friends over at Esports Bet. Make sure to play uh, responsibly and do your research whether uh, on the legality of your region. All right. What do we got here? Ball, LCS. Not many games, so not much to choose from. Just the two. Those are the two that they have up. They don't have the uh, futures because there's, there's we don't know who's teams. playing them. Yeah. yeah. All right. EG is a 1.2 against uh, TSM, which is 3.8. And then you got TL is the favorite against energy, which I think is accurate as well, as much as I want Juanito to win. All right, Dom, do your thing. Talk to me about uh, time. <laughs> yeah, so game time, I'm not going to go with game time here because I feel like the better teams here. So NRG is really hard to, to predict. And then also I think EG can end games really fast. Like they can have some really quick games um, as well. So it, I, I'm going to take here. I think it's pretty conservative, but I'll take EG minus 1.5 versus TSM. So that's just like predicting 3-1 or 3-0. Um, and that's a 1.537 odds. So that'll be my pick. EG minus 1.5 versus TSM. 1.5 maps, obviously. I think the I, I think the minus yeah I I think EG minus one point five maps makes a lot of sense. Uh, obviously there was the there's the Twitter thing that happened earlier today, right? There was the car accident with Revenge and JoJo. Yeah. Um, so with the series also coming up, uh, apparently, or so I've been told, um, their some of their scrims have been canceled. Uh, in light of this, so I don't know how many scrim days or anything is going to actually happen um leading up to this match uh and then apparently also like internet was like i, I don't know they're just not able to get a lot of games in before this match so i i still think they're gonna win but i wonder how like warmed up they are going into the match sure also for people that don't know they are okay uh yeah they, uh, they got t-boned which is when you get hit on the side so uh but all the all the players are okay i think it was jojo and uh revenge that one yeah. Um, give me. All right, Dom. I'm just. I'm taking yours. Game one duration time thirty two minutes for TL and energy. Give me over. I feel like uh, both these teams don't know how to close out a game. So yep. uh, yeah. energy Unless plays I'm, some really long games. Prim primarily yeah. when when energy's winning, they play the long games. Like they're really bad at closing out themselves. But if yep. they're losing, sometimes they can lose fast. So I think they, it's uh all over. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's like you're kind of hoping that they like come out and they're winning the game and then they just fuck up a Baron and the game goes forever. Do you know how many times this year, not even just with energy, but this year teams are like, we're a best of five team that energy <laughs> being one of them saying that like, I, yeah. I believe in the prep that these teams are going to put in to at least have like more competitive uh, series. Um, all right, y'all. That was the hell of an episode to close out the regular season of the LCS. We talked a, a ton about uh, the league itself, about how we felt about this summer, and then the teams going into uh, playoffs here. Had a couple of uh, uh, votes for all pro as well. A lot of fun. Shout-outs to uh, the women's Philippine national team playing at the World Cup. The first time that uh, my heritage having representation for soccer. So uh, congrats, ladies. Um, any shout outs or closing thoughts here, Dom? Nope. I'm, I'm good to go, man. I'm ready. I mean, by next, by next week, whew, I'm going to be refreshed. Uh, like LEC will be done by the next week's episode. So LEC will be done for the split. Obviously they have the season finals, but they're going to be on like right. a little bit of a break. LPL will be majority done. So I'm going to have some time to like chill. I'll be able to maybe produce some videos about LCS. Um, 
that I want to talk about. I have, I have a concept that I want to explain in detail that I think makes Golden Guardians a better match up internationally than C9. Um, and I just want to go into like detail and explain it because I think it's something that people don't talk about when it comes to ways to set up fights. So that's something I look forward to doing. Yep. Yeah. LS? Uh, no, I mean... Yeah, I, 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 like uh, finally the splits are gonna all like come to a close, and fucking then we have August Championship Series starts, and then I don't know what is gonna go on for Worlds. From some of the players that I've talked to on like LEC and LCS teams, some of them have said that even if they make Worlds, they're not coming to Worlds until like the event's really close. Um. Again, like alluding to like the burnout stuff, um, where uh, just this split or this year has been really intensive. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. August and September are going to be fucking really interesting. Yep. Right. Well, Asian games as well. So Asian games. Interesting. Can't wait to see that one too. Like mm -hmm. the the super team. Maybe uh, Kenvi can play for. Is Kenvi actually the best jungler from the Philippines? Maybe he can't even play for the Philippines in uh in Asian uh, games. You I don't know. know. I think he could, but I think they already listed the rosters for. Asian yeah, no, games. they should probably just take like a diamond player from like Philippine server. All right, uh, League of Legends. Let me, I, I, <laughs> okay. Before we close, now, now you got me looking. I got to see this team. All right. Their okay, their jungler is West Point Esports Academy. Ooh, West Point Esports Academy. Okay, nice. Yeah, interesting. Not exactly sure who that is, but LOL PC team. They have a, oh, it's part of Siebel. Oh man, this is like the government controlled team. Anyway. Ooh. Uh, isn't draft on, by the way, for Dom? Yeah. What? We'll see. Isn't draft on? Yep. Okay. Right. Time to go, guys. Yep. Yeah, see you guys later. Later. We'll as much as possible. You. Yeah, I was stalling yeah. as much as possible. See you guys later. We'll catch All you guys right. next time. See you later. Bye. 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 Yep. Yep. See you. Bye.